So in this lesson, we're going to load up our DMX plugins and make sure that we've got all the DMX settings configured correctly. Um, there's no way of knowing for me if you've done this correctly without you knowing your own system. Uh, we'll only know it's not working later on in the project. And I guess you've got to hope that it doesn't work for me at some point so that I have to troubleshoot it and that will be the solution that you need. Uh, we, at this point, best option is just Google things aren't working. There's so many people out there have answered your questions. So we've got the user interface up. Um, we created a scene, we haven't saved it yet. Uh, we created a new level, it's called Untitled. We're just gonna save this so we know that we are, um, uh, we're working on a level that's, that's, that's current. So save current level and save current level as, we might as well just do level as, so we can name it. Um, we're gonna save it in the content folder and I'm gonna create a new folder. Right click to create this sort of menu. Create a new folder, I'm gonna call it Maps. Now you can, Downloads. Other people have created formats for what would be a really good folder structure. I suggest you look into building a folder structure that you like. Um, I'm just going to build this as we go. So I'm going to click into Maps. So we're in the Maps folder, and I'm going to name it DMX Console. Again, it's the only level we're going to have in this project um, unless we really expand it in the future. So DMX Console is fine. I'm going to save that. Now, if you want to find it again, you're thinking, where's all the assets? Especially if you've used Unreal Engine 4 before, they've, they've hidden it. It's here in the content browser. And you can load it up by pressing Control and Space Bar. Just loads up like that. So when you're working, just keep it in Control and Space. Or you can click on the content browser. And there's the folder, Maps. And there's our DMX console map in there. It's a level. So we're going to need this in a second because we're going to put it in as our default map. So if I open Unreal for the first time, it's going to load the map that we saw when we first opened it, that's that's already loaded. So if you go into edits up here, everything we need to adjust all the settings and controls for Unreal are in these three windows. Edge the preferences, got to be honest, don't need to go in there very often. Project settings, you'll be in there all the time. Plugins, very important, but hopefully we only need to touch that once. So we're going to start with project settings. And here you start to see all the things that you can set up. Like if you want to publish an app, all the settings will be in here. We're going to go to Maps and Modes. And you can see here that the open world is the editor that comes up when you start up the map. And the game default map is also open world. <clears throat> the difference between these two things, one is what loads into the editor when you open up the Unreal Engine editor, as opposed to Unreal Engine, which is actually the, the applications, uh, what's inside the applications you're building. The game default map is what gets built. So you might have an editor that loads up, for instance, the page that you're working on or the scene you're working on. Say you're working on a, um, a game, which is obviously what Unreal is intended for, and you may be working on a house. You want that to be the game that you, the level that always loads when you open the system because you don't want to keep going to find it. But when you build it, you need to always build from the start page because that's the one that's uh, got the navigation menu to get you to eventually the map that you're in. So you might have two different worlds here. Um, we're working on the same map, uh, so I'm going to go to my content drawer, I'm going to get my DMX console map, just checking you can see this, and I'm going to drag it across and leave it in there. The other way of doing this is you can click on the drop down menu and it will show you all of the levels that it, it has, and it has got a few, it's built a few standard ones for us, but we can see DMX console at the top, so let's stick that in there. That's done. Um, we're going to come back to the project settings later and do some work on the DMX plugin first. So I'm going to close that down. And I should say that even though it does seem to save it automatically, I have a Twitch reaction. I have to do file save all quite regularly, which just saves everything that you've changed. If you save the current level, it will save the map DMX console, which is the, the, the world that we're actually in. But it doesn't save all the project settings and all the stuff around it because they are global to all maps. So I do file save all just to make sure that everything we've changed is, is captured. And it's important to do this regularly, not just because you need to protect your work for, you know, if there's a crash, but also because settings that you're applying might not compile and appear in other plugins while you're working. Um, so you might be looking for something and say, why is this IP address wrong? And it's because you haven't saved uh, the IP address that you set in the project settings. You'll discover these things for yourself, I'm sure. So let's go to the plugins folder now. And in here is every plugin that comes with Unreal, which is a lot. And I use Unity quite a lot, which is an alternative uh, games editor. Uh, and they don't give you any of the plugins to start with. You have to download them all from the package manager one at a time. So it's a much smaller installation. The reason Unreal is so big is 
because they give you so much up front, which I like about it, to be honest. It means it's all there, ready to go. So we, we have quite a lot of things already enabled, like the Alembic importer. Um, just a note, don't use that if you're using an iPhone, doesn't work. Um, if you wanted to find something particular like you know, Composure, which is a compositing tool, you could just activate that. Um, down here, you've got lists of, of things that are useful. So I'm often coming down here to, uh, where are we, like motion capture and tracking information, or virtual production. There's loads of stuff in here that's really cool. Um, the take recorder, we're not using that, I think, in this tutorial, but I'll do a tutorial on that at some point. Live link for bringing in feeds from tracking systems. It's, you know, it's all in here. You'll actually notice DMX protocols in here, which is the one we're looking for. Um, there's quite a lot of DMX tools in here. Um, we don't need all of them, but it's difficult to tell when you're working which ones you do and don't need. Uh, what I often do is just come to the top and type in DMX, and it'll just bring up everything that's DMXable. Uh, we definitely don't need pixel mapping in this project. The display cluster also isn't needed. Uh, the DMX engine is, is fundamental. That's, that's a, a critical part. That's what controls the patching system. So we need that. Um, DMX protocol is what actually sends your DMX protocols out of your system. We need that. So I'm going to add that in as well. And DMX fixtures. Um, we're going to want this because ultimately we want to try and patch a fixture in. We're not going to need that at the beginning of the project, but later on we're going to start patching fixtures. So we need that as well. So I've clicked those three. Uh, you must restart Unreal Editor for your changes to take effect. So I'm going to click Restart, but before I do, I'm going to end this video. And in the next chapter, we're going to start building all of our um, Unreal Engine interface.